So I'm joined in the studio by Linda Yu, a fellow in economics at Oxford University and a visiting professor at the London Business School. Linda, thanks so much for coming in to chat to us about this. So the last time we talked about this, we were saying that um, every time uh, Washington calls uh, uh, China a currency manipulator, it kind of puts back how long it's going to be before um, anything happens with the yuan. What happens now that there is a, a kind of a global consensus on this? It's very unfortunate in terms, again, of timing mm. for the Chinese because there were lots of internal reasons and signs the Chinese were going to normalize their exchange rate before all of this happened. By normalize, I mean the dollar peg they adopted about 20 months ago was in reaction to the crisis. They yeah. wanted to peg the currency to the safe haven uh, mm. dollar. But of course, before that, from 2005 until then, they had run a currency which was traded against a trade-weighted basket. Mm. And that better reflects their overall trade position. That's what they were doing. And then, of course, all of this political tension broke out with a very weak recovery this year. Yeah. Now, we've seen fellow BRIC um, countries sort of turn up the heat, Brazil and India. It obviously suits them, of course, hugely to have a stronger yuan, right? This is self-interest. Yes, very much so. Um, China is the world's biggest trader. So if it uh, fixes its currency against another currency. It mm -hmm. doesn't allow the global supply and demand forces to operate. But let's make this more concrete. How would it help Brazil? Mm -hmm. Well, Brazil is a big commodity exporter. It sells lots of things to China. If the Chinese yuan were stronger, it makes it more likely they will buy more things from Brazil. Yeah. And at the same time, a stronger yuan makes the exports from Brazil more competitive against Chinese exports. Same rationale applies to India. So therefore, it is in their self-interest to see a stronger yuan and I'm afraid this is why China is going to feel a bit ganged up on because they're going to view it as these countries acting just rather in their view selfishly. Of course uh, Brazil is uh, his biggest, his biggest exporter is, to, is into, his biggest exports go into China but looking at the uh, what's going to happen at the G20 I mean you say that China is going to feel ganged up on because it, it is going to be ganged up on if they don't do anything this time though you know we've got a, another, uh, another finance ministers meeting in Toronto in June. I mean, it's not going to go away, is it? No, it isn't. I think now we are just watching for when, not if. The mm -hmm. Chinese will reform their currency. I think the difficulty is not now just in terms of timing, but in terms of how strong the pressure is for mm -hmm. China to change to a regime which is much more flexible, therefore more like a floating currency. From the Chinese point of view, what are the benefits of this, of actually of having a more free-floating currency? There's a lot of potential benefits. Um, for one, the Chinese are experiencing very strong inflationary pressure. Mm -hmm. And that does come about for having a cheap currency. China is a net food importer. It imports commodities. And having a very low currency makes everything much more expensive. So that means import prices are high, food prices are high. And the government suppresses commodity prices by subsidizing them to promote industry. So they're wasting money on subsidies of inputs. Mm -hmm. So all these things can actually go away if they allow their currency to actually to rise and mm -hmm. to appreciate. And um, I think I think, as I said before, the biggest benefit is clearly that China has very high savings rate. Yes. It's always going to have very strong inflows of capital as a result. Mm -hmm. So having a currency which is pegged to at least a trade-weighted basket so it can be offset by deficits in their trading accounts with Asia will help alleviate some of that pressure. So there's lots of reasons why the Chinese will reform their currency and their, their legitimate economic reasons. Indeed. So do you think at the moment there is a kind of a tussle going on in Beijing as to what exactly to do and when to do it? Very much so. Mm. I think that they've been talking some time now about reforming the regime, pushing it back to a more sensible uh, uh, exchange rate. And something else which is being debated, which has been widely overlooked, is the Chinese are also very keen to promote capital account liberalization, allowing capital outflows. This means companies going global. That's actually another way of putting down pressure on the currency. If lots of capital flows out of China, mm -hmm. then that implies the currency will weaken. If they did that, they would accomplish not just managing their domestic inflationary liquidity pressures better, they can also help their companies become global players, allowing them to compete on the global marketplace 
place, using the yuan and the reserves to buy overseas assets and M&A. Lots of things can be accomplished. That's what they're talking about. What they're very hesitant about is what to do in terms of timing. Mm. And just on timing, very quickly, when is this going to happen? I still think summer looks very likely, but it will depend on whether or not the June G20 meeting makes it all a bit of another political haberdash. <laughs>